going to cover today is something called significant digits, sometimes called significant figures. I read you a little uh, message I got from Jax yesterday about that particular topic. And I drilled it really hard last year in um, some of my classes. And I had somebody else this morning saying, Mr. Dempsey, yes, the expectation last year, because I'm in physics this year with Mr. Broy, and or Ms. Shaw, Ms. Shaw's been in physics this year. And he says, I know it already. Good. So let's talk about two words first before we get to that, uh, because this is review and it's a little bit important that we understand precision and accuracy before we get into why significant digits are important. Um, the first word here, accuracy. Accuracy is how close you are to the target. Okay, I drew a picture over here of a circle. I put a bullseye in the middle and I put the word true right here. Okay, if we say something is true, that is the target. We're aiming for something to be true and right on target. Um, if you're shooting a bow and arrow, you're aiming for the bullseye. If you're throwing darts, you're aiming for the little red bullseye in the middle, 50 points. Uh, if you are shooting guns, you're aiming for the middle of the target, hopefully. Okay. Um, so something that is accurate, you are hitting the target where you want it to go. Now the difference between accuracy and precision is precision has to do with how repeatable excuse me, your shots are. So again, if I'm shooting a cluster of five shots with a gun, I'm going to look at how close together those bullets are hitting the target. If I'm shooting arrows, I'm going to go walk up to the target after I'm done and look at my placement of arrows and see if I have a nice, good cluster. A cluster would be repeatable, very repeatable if they're all in the same area. Okay, same thing applies in darts. Same thing applies in almost anything where you're throwing even, what's the beanbag name? Cornhole. Yeah, even cornhole, right? Uh, somebody who is always hitting right on target there, very good precision. Now, if they can hit it right in the hole every time, they have very good accuracy. Now, the difference is, if I have good precision, you can usually get it to accuracy. If you're shooting a gun and you've got good precision, but you're off target, you can usually adjust your scopes, right? And so you adjust your scopes and you can get this moved here. Um, if you're shooting a bow and arrow and you have good precision, but you're not hitting the middle of the target, you've got to evaluate your, your uh, technique. Is your stance right? Is your release on? Is your, uh, are your arrows cocked right? Okay? And what, is, what is wrong that's pulling your shots up to the right? So precision is repeatability of measurements. So if we're measuring something in the lab, I got 82.1, 82.3, 82.4, 82.1, 82.2, 82.3, 82.4, 82.5, 82.6, 82.7, 82.8, 82.9, 82.10, 82.11, 82.12, 82.13, 82.14, 82.15, 82.16, 82.17, 82.18, 82.19, 82.20, 
in the lab. Okay, we have two different measurements, one from the triple beam balance and one from the digital scale. Who remembers what you got? Give me an example of what you got. John, what? Well, the court was like two. What was it on the triple beam balance though? If I remember the difference between those two scales. I still have the lab over there. I haven't done much with it. Mary White. Mary Francis. Hopefully not. Okay. On the triple beam balance, you might have gotten a number like 2.4 grams. When you put it on the digital scale, it said 2. And you might have said 2 what? So here's where precision comes into play. The digital scales that we have in the lab are only accurate to the nearest gram. So when you, if you found something was two grams, it might have been 1.9, 1.8, 1.7. It might have been 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, or 2.4. We don't know because that scale is not precise enough to tell me tenths of a gram, right? So this is a, that was an exa excellent example of precision, okay? The triple beam balance is actually more precise because on the triple beam balance, you slide that front beam back and forth and it measures to the tenth of a gram. I can go 2.4 or 2.5 or 2.3. Some of you might've gotten 2.2, okay? But it depends where you actually put that final little thing and you can get more precision. Good? Now, so precision is limited by the tools. So if I go to a um, <coughs> graduated cylinder, and I have some water inside here, okay? And say this is 42, 43, 44, 45, good? And I know, where do I read my meniscus? Shelby? At the bottom. And so I look at this real carefully, and here's my, my, the bottom of my meniscus. So what's my answer going to be here, Shelby? Sure of it, but we're sure it's between 43 and 44. 
Good? It's right in front of my face. Okay. All of the known digits plus one estimated digit is significant figures. I call them sig figs. My abbreviation is SF. You see that on your paper anytime in the next year. That means you forgot to take care of your sig figs. For instance, a ruler. Here's a ruler, right? It's got centimeters, four centimeters, five centimeters, six centimeters. We're measuring this metal rod here. Is it between five and six? Yeah. Everybody agree, okay? Between five and six. Is it between 5.2 and 5.3? Okay. So what's the next number? Okay, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24. Ah, somewhere in there, right? So that last digit, in this case the three, somebody said this is 5.23, okay, is going to be estimated. But all three of those numbers are important because they tell me I know for sure that between 5.2 and 5.3, I think it's pretty close to this number here. So significant figures include all the known digits plus one more digit. But that last digit is usually um, one degree of precision smaller than the smallest increments on your on your measuring thing, right? So if it's, for instance, this side is in inches, I got half inch, quarter inch, eighth of an inch. The smallest increment here is an eighth of an inch. So if something was right in between these two lines, I would say one and one sixteenth. Do I know it's exactly one and one sixteenth? No, but I know it's somewhere between one and one and an eighth, and that would be one and one sixteenth, right? Okay, so this is sig figs. Five rules for sig figs. Please write these down. And then I will illustrate them for you as we go along. And then we'll see how to use them. Number one, every non-zero number, what is that, one through nine, are significant. In other words, here, 43.2. All three of those are significant. Three significant figures. 5.55029. Now, don't worry about the zero right now. All of these are significant because rule number two tells me that if I have zeros in the middle of significant figures, which is all the other numbers, then they are also significant. So all non-zero digits, we need to make sure we don't ignore them. Zeros in the middle of other numbers are also, we just can't make them disappear. In other words, 5.55029 says I can measure this out to the hundred thousandths place. This zero is important because it keeps track of how far I can measure. If I had the number like this, uh, let me suppose Peyton, uh, if he stepped on the scale last week and measured how many kilograms he was, okay? Suppose Peyton stepped on the scale and said I was 91.11 uh, kilograms. Now, if he said that, he's telling us he knows for sure it was more than 91.1 but not yet 91.2, and so he has estimated this last digit here, okay? And we would say that scale would have been able to measure to the hundredths of a kilogram place. I don't think it was, but I'm just using this as an example, okay? How about if we said it was 91.001, okay? If that was the case, he's telling me that he can measure all the way down to the hundredths of a kilogram, which is very hard to do, but again, for the sake of argument, those zeros are important. Suppose you told me that um, you drove 55.0003 miles per hour on your car. I'm going to look at you really weird, okay? Because I'm going to say, there's no way your speedometer can measure to the 10,000th place of a mile per hour, right? I don't know any car that would. It's kind of crazy. It doesn't make sense. But if you wrote this down, you're telling me that you can actually measure that, okay? And that it's significant, because all of these numbers are significant according to rule one and two. Good? And this would have one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. This would have four significant figures. This has five significant figures. This has six significant figures. Okay, you just count them up. How many are there? Rule number three says that zeros to the right of a decimal are significant.
drop that down, and then look up here, okay? Let's take this illustration again. Suppose I had 55.000, and I wrote that on a lab report, number of grams, okay? Again, I'm going to look at you really funny, okay? Because if I have a scale that can measure one thousandth of a gram, that's a $5,000 scale. It's like the Academy doesn't own one, okay? And so, uh, um, if you write it down this way, you're telling me that you can actually measure that. You're telling me it's not 55, it's not 54.999. You're telling me it's not 55.001. You're telling me you can measure that, and you know for sure that that last digit is somewhere between the five before it and the four after, right? Actually, 54.995 and 55.004 or something like that. Okay, so trailing zeros to the right of the decimal are important because they tell me, nurse tell me you can measure this. Rule number four. That is another kind of zero. So this is the tricky part of this one. If you have zeros that aren't to the right of a decimal place, Suppose I call up the state um, uh, government offices up in uh, Montgomery and I say, what's the official population for the state of Alabama? And they say, the official population is 5,462,000. Okay, so what are they telling me? Are they telling me that uh, they haven't counted the person who was born in the hospital today yet? and that tomorrow it's going to be 5,462,001? Is that what they're saying? What are they telling me here? Houston? It's an estimate. Between? If they tell me this is the population of Alabama, what do they really mean? Interpret this for me. Olivia? Is it between 541500 and 5.5 You're on the right track. Will? Is it like between 5,461,000 and 5,000? Get closer. Okay? Remember our last digit, if it's significant, the two here in this case is going to be our uncertainty number. So we're saying it's somewhere between 5,460,000 and somewhere between 500,470,000 or something like this, okay? I wouldn't argue with you if you said 65, but, but that last digit, we're not kind of, you know, the, the people who keep tabs of the population say, you know what, there's, there's, there's 862 births in the state every day and there's uh, 433 people that die every day in the state of Alabama, and there's, there's 20, 222 people that move out of state every day in the state of Alabama, and there's 183 people that move into the state of Alabama every day, and then there's the people that come from overseas that are illegal aliens, and they show up and we can't be tracked. So it's a moving target. Nobody knows. Nobody knows the exact population of Alabama every day, right? So based on the last census, somewhere in here, there's approximately 5,462,000. Now, which one of these are significant? The first four, but not these three. These three are placeholders, okay? So those placeholders, one way to check your answer is if you can write it with scientific notation. So we're gonna say this would be 5.462, right? It has to be a number between one and 10, like we saw yesterday, times 10 to the six. Okay. 
So when I write it like this, it becomes really obvious how many sig figs I have. Because the number of sig figs here has to be the same as the number of sig figs here. Scientific notation only uses sig figs, which is one of the benefits of using scientific notation. Does everybody see that? Okay, so this last digit is our uncertain one, but it's an important one. We still write it down, we still keep track of it. Okay, rule number four, placeholder zeros, which are the zeros at the end, usually, of a number that's bigger than one. Okay, we're not talking to the right of the zero, the decimal. We don't count those. So this would be four significant figures. Number five, don't, this is a horrible, wording, I would say counting numbers and constants are disregarded. That's what I would say in your notes, okay? Don't take into account counting numbers <coughs> and constants. Ignore counting numbers and constants. Something like that, okay? So we're going to, we're going to use this thing about sig figs to do some calculations in a minute. And what you want to do is if you have a counting number, we don't, we don't count how many sig figs it is. Here's why. Counting numbers are exact. Everything regarding sig figs on your page and your notes you want to put, these are measured quantities. Measured quantities. If I'm counting how many people in this room, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Mr. Yevsky, 18. Am I telling you there's somewhere between 17 and 19 people in this room? No, I'm telling you, there's 18 people. We don't do half seats on people, okay, right? I'm not telling you there's a quarter of a person here or an extra missing leg here, okay? Uh, we got 18 people, and there's 18 people. So that has no significance when I'm talking about savings. It's, it's an exact quantity. Same thing with our constants. If I say pi, you know, not like cherry pi, but the mathematical pi, 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. It goes on forever. We're not going to say that has an infinite number of significant figures. We're just going to say it's a constant. We're not going to count it as far as its sig figs. Okay? So counting numbers and constants are disregarded. These are your five little Okay, just a quick warning. Some calculators are clueless. They're not smart. They do what you tell them to do. So if I tell you, if you're, you tell your calculator 4.132 times 1.111, so if I do that for me real quick. Go ahead, read the whole thing, Mark. Yeah. Does it stop there? Anybody have more six, more digits? Most calculators go up to about 10. No. Yes? Okay, so here's the scoop. Can I multiply two numbers? This has four significant figures, and this has four significant figures, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All non zeros. Can I multiply two things that are both accurate to the thousands place and get something that magically transforms and now it's accurate to the millions place? No. Okay. In science, it doesn't work that way. I can't take a measurement of pressure and a measurement of volume, multiply them together, and magically I have gained a bunch of precision. Okay. So this is why we pay attention to sig figs. Calculators don't always know how to do it. Some of the new ones, some of the real expensive ones, you can turn on something that will try and keep track of your sig figs. So your answer can never have more sig figs than what you start with. Your answer can never have more precision than the numbers that you get that answer from. That's the way I like to say it. Answers can never have more precision than the original data. Answers can never be more precise than what we start with. I'm going to show you in a second, okay? It'll make sense once I do it all the time. Just enough to do an example here. Now, 
Now I'm not going to cover this. Rounding off, I'm going to stay with the real simple stuff. If it's five or higher, you round up. If it's four or less, we don't round up. We keep the same. Okay. So I'm going to skip over the rounding. You can read your book if you want. They got some really weird rules here that I really never knew until I started teaching. <laughs> okay. It's like, what? I don't know that one. Okay, addition and subtraction and multiplication division <coughs> have two sets of rules for sigfix. I'm going to teach you multiplication and division right now. We'll come back and do this one. This is a little trickier on Tuesday. Get rid of that. So let's do multiplication division since I got one on the board already. Okay, so just think you can write those down if you want. But let's talk about this. How many sigfix? 4.132. Emily, right here. How many sigfix? <laughs> Four. JP, how many sig feet? One point one one one. Four. Okay. So that means when I multiply this together, my answer cannot have more than four sig feet. So what's that answer again, Michael? Four point five nine two six five two. So when I look at my answer here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna have to round off this last digit. So that's gonna be four point five nine one final answer. My answer can't have more sig figs than either one of these. Now let me give you an example that has two different numbers. Michael, you're still my multiplier, okay? Three point zero 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 one. I've measured that in the lab and I'm multiplying it by one point two. I measured that in the lab. And I'm putting these two numbers together to calculate volume or Pressure or whatever the case may be. What you got? 3.60012. Okay. How many sig figs, JP, right here? 30001. Uh, yes. Okay. Because all non zeros and any zeros in between are all significant. How many sig figs here, Gloria? Two. Just two. So if I have two different numbers, my answer can never be more accurate or more precise than the least. So this answer is limited to this number of sig figs, two. So my answer here is going to be done. I have to throw away all this stuff because I don't know if that's really true or not. Because I don't know if this is 1.20, 1.200, 1.200. All I know is that right there, two sig figs. So my answer can only have two sig figs. So you always look at the numbers and pick the smallest of the two. And your answer can never have more sig figs than the smallest number of sig figs in what you're multiplying or dividing. Suppose I do this one. One more. Uh, 3.54981 divided by, Michael, um, 1.002. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so how many sig figs, uh, Alex, right here? Six. Yes, good job. How many sig figs here, Abby? So my answer can't have more than four, so it's going to be 3.54, and we're going to round that off to three. 3.543, okay? Good. I forgot to write your homework on the board. <coughs> There is none. Thank you. Have a good week. Stay safe. Don't do anything crazy. All right. 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 I'll tell you in a few minutes.